One of the most common questions I get from patients who are suffering from arthritis, is there a medication that they can take that's gonna help reduce their pain? And so one class of medication, which has become popular, are topical anti-inflammatories. And these can be lotions or gels. Both the American College of Rheumatology and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery do come out to make recommendations for using uh, topical NSAIDs and oral NSAIDs. Those are things that you take by mouth. However, the Osteoarthritis Research Society International, they come out with a strong recommendation for taking uh, topical NSAIDs and they only have a conditional recommendation for taking the oral NSAIDs. And so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore what some of the scientific studies show about topical NSAIDs, how well do they work, and how safe are they. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York. I specialize in arthroscopic surgery and sports medicine. So let's start from the top. Do topical NSAIDs work? Do these lotions and gels, do they actually make a difference? And so there was a meta-analysis over 100,000 people, and they compared a topical NSAID, this one was diclofenac, and they compared it to a placebo. And in fact, they found that those people who were using the topical NSAID, it actually helped reduce pain compared to those who had taken the placebo. However, you have to keep in mind, it only works for a few weeks duration of time. So how well do topical NSAIDs, these lotions and creams, stack up against other medications? Things like oral anti-inflammatories or Tylenol or even opioids. So here there are studies that have looked and they have found that when they compare topical anti-inflammatories to oral, they both seem in the short duration over the course of let's say four to 12 weeks to equally help reduce pain and improve function. Now, what about comparing topical uh, anti-inflammatory to Tylenol, acetaminophen? So here they find, again, over the first few weeks, they're both equally pretty good at reducing pain. However, the topical anti-inflammatory seems to work better for improving function. Now, how does it stack up against taking an opioid, you know, a real painkiller? So here again, very interestingly, the topical anti-inflammatories seem to work better at reducing pain than even taking oral opioids. All medication come with some risks, some side effects that can occur. And so with oral anti-inflammatories, many people are aware that it can cause gastrointestinal problems and cardiovascular problems. What some people don't realize is that acetaminophen, Tylenol, also comes with those similar problems. And then finally, topical anti-inflammatories seem to be um, safer and have less of a risk profile, but they also do have some risks. Sometimes it could be a skin irritation or rash and can also have, sometimes have some GI or other side effects as well. So as we just did a comparative analysis, if you will, of the success of uh, topical anti-inflammatories to these other medications, now let's do a comparative analysis of their risks. So let's first start off talking about topical anti-inflammatories versus acetaminophen or Tylenol. So here studies have shown that using a topical anti-inflammatory has a 40% lower risk of all-cause mortality, which means death, and a 25% lower risk of cardiovascular disease, and almost a 45% lower risk of gastrointestinal bleeding. Now let's compare topical anti-inflammatories to oral anti-inflammatories. And so here again, topical anti-inflammatories have a 55% lower risk of a gastrointestinal adverse event. They have a 40% lower risk of all-cause mortality, which again is, means death, and a 25% lower risk of having a major cardiovascular disease. And then 25% lower risk of a uh, blood clot and about a 30% lower risk of having a gastrointestinal bleed. Now let's look at opioids and the risk of taking these type of strong painkillers. Following along in the same train of thought, there was a meta-analysis of over 100,000 people, and they found that 90% of people who were taking opioids had some sort of adverse event, whereas 30% of those people taking oral anti-inflammatories had an adverse event, and almost none of those who were doing a topical anti-inflammatory had an adverse event. Very, very few did. So in these a comparative analysis, it looks like the topical anti-inflammatory has a safer profile. So if you watch some of my other videos, you know that I'm going to bring up the benefits of exercise as a treatment alternative. 
Doing exercise can help reduce pain. So let's compare how effective exercise is at reducing pain compared to an oral anti-inflammatory. A meta-analysis study was published just this year and included about 17,000 people. In this study, they also compared exercise to oral NSAIDs. And what they found was they both were equally well at reducing pain and improving function. However, exercise comes with the benefit of having a very safe profile, whereas the oral NSAIDs we just discussed do have risks of side effects. Let's wrap up this video and go over a few key points. So number one, topical NSAIDs seem to be just as effective as oral NSAIDs with regard to reducing pain and improving function. Number two, topical NSAIDs seem to have a safer profile and less adverse events and risks than do taking oral NSAIDs. Number three, topical NSAIDs seem to be more effective than Tylenol, specifically with regard to improving function. Number four, topical NSAIDs seem to work very well for a few weeks, so they're not gonna be a long-term answer to pain. So when someone has, let's say, an episodic flare-up of their arthritis, topical NSAIDs may be a good solution, but not a long-term solution. Number five, Acetaminophen or Tylenol also has side effects, a very similar risk profile as NSAIDs, particularly with regard to gastrointestinal events and cardiovascular events. And finally, number six, exercise, very effective at reducing pain and improving function and has a very good safety profile without many of the risks that are associated with medication. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or in my office.